So, Shelly and Mike, thanks for taking the time. Thank you. We're here at E3 to talk about the, well, newest uh, MMO in the field and one of the more unusual ones because it's about pirates. It's yeah. Sea of Thieves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the game is, I mean, we always thought about it as very different. It's a new IP about doing new and different things. And for us, I mean, I guess we never really considered it an MMO. I mean, we always wanted to build this cooperative adventure game. But the difference was that you'd be in this shared world and the idea that running parallel to you, there's other crews out there, they're having their own adventures. Sometimes you'll come across them and then that's when you get these explosion of possibilities because people are using tools in new and interesting ways, right? That's the magic of Sea of Thieves. So yeah, we are a game with a, um, a lot of players out there on the seas, but the magic is you never quite know who you're going to come across, both mm -hmm. within your crew. If you go in and match mate with people that you don't know, you don't quite know what mm. adventure is going to happen to you. You mm. just set sail and it's a different story every time. We've tried to make the game like especially immersive. Like taking decisions around, let's remove as much UI as possible. Let's keep mm -hmm. people grounded. Like you are there in that world. Mm -hmm. You know, you're physically picking up chess. You're physically interacting with the map table. Nobody has a mini map. It's about being in the world and having these wonderful adventures. You mentioned sometimes you meet uh, different players, yeah. and um, actually, I've been told that it's not so common to to meet other players. You meet them every 20 minutes or so, but yeah. it's not like a World of Warcraft raid where hundreds of people just wait to enter the dungeon. No, I mean, that's, that's a really fascinating part of Sea of Thieves. It's interesting you said 20 minutes. That was exactly our <laughs> experience goal. Mm -hmm. We set out around how we place the islands, where we place the outposts, where people get quests from and turn in their rewards, how big the world was. That was all around ensuring that the shipping counter frequency was around 15 minutes to 20 minutes. It was around that kind of range. Because mm. it allowed players to meet with their crew, to bond with them, make a little bit of progress. They might have treasure on board. And when they see another ship, how they react is kind of a result of their adventure. Maybe they run scared because they've got treasure on board. Maybe they want to work with that ship to kind of take down the Kraken. Mm -hmm. But then what we do is we, we put these kind of catalysts in the game, like the Skeleton Fort. It's got a huge skull cloud that forms over it. And that means that there's these uh, increased rewards at the fort. And that pulls players together. Mm -hmm. So even though you're in this shared world, we, we make certain decisions around uh, encouraging crews to kind of meet mm -hmm. together in this world. And we did that most recently with a, a recent content yeah. release with The Hunger in Deep, yeah, right? Yeah, so with The Hunger in Deep, that was our, um, our first kind of large content release after launch, which launched a couple of weeks ago now. Yeah. And what we wanted to do was... We wanted to try with the, so we introduced the content of The Hunger in Deep and we wrapped a campaign around it and we thought it'd be really interesting to see how our players would find it if we made you work with another crew. So in order to summon this Megalodon, this new awesome threat, in order to see that and have that gameplay experience of beating the Megalodon and getting these awesome time limited cosmetics, you needed five players mm -hmm. and the most you can have on a crew is four. four yeah. So, yeah. Um, and we were like, we were kind of experimental with this we wanted mm -hmm. to see how it would go down with players and it exceeded our wildest expectations because you would you turned up at Sharp Bait Cove which is where the quest began and it became this kind of awesome social hub of activity where you'd have sloops uh, anchored down you'd have galleons and mm -hmm. everybody had the speaking trumpet which is so, so sorry a sloop is for one sloop, player yes yeah, so one no. to two yeah. players it's a small ship uh -huh. Uh -huh. and They would be anchored down there and they'd be using the speaking trumpet, which we introduced at the same time, allows you to project your voice to people not on your crew further. So uh, it's like a megaphone. It's like a megaphone, yeah. yeah. And um, they'd be shouting out, like, do you want to go take down the megalodon together? Yeah, or like, yeah. I've, done the, I've done this part of the quest. Yeah. And people would really band together around that. And I think that's what's unique about the social like meeting of other players in mm. Sea of Thieves. We, we didn't want it to be this relentless thing where you always got other people. The space for you and your crew to have your adventures. Yeah. Yeah. When you come across another crew, it's, it's completely meaningful every time. Like, are, you, are they friendly? Are they foe? But then we can do these things with new content and with campaigns to change that up even more and bring in these extra social dynamics mm -hmm. like working together to take down the Megalodon. But why is the uh, crew member cap set at four? Think of, I mean, the best way to describe it is think of, think of real life. Mm -hmm. If you imagine if we were to go and if we're going to have, we have a night on the town in LA, mm -hmm. if we had a fourth member joining us, mm -hmm. that feels like the right number mm -hmm. for us to have this kind of intimate adventure together as we, as we go on our bar crawl mm. and that's the right number for us to communicate mm. and feel like we're working together mm. and sharing that moment mm. if you go too far beyond that you get fractures mm -hmm. people it sounds like more people would be more fun 
and that's make sure you have three subgroups. Uh, exactly, you know, it's very hard like to a party coordinate. In real life. Exactly, and yeah. into subgroups. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you mentioned Hungering Deep, which came out in May. Yeah. Then there's Cursed Sales, I think, in July. That's correct. And, and then in September, Forsaken Shores. That's correct. Can you very briefly uh, wrap, uh, wrap up what, what they are? Yeah, about? absolutely. So I take about Cursed Sales and absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So Cursed Sales comes out in July, and this introduces another new AI threat to the world in the form of skeleton ships. So our community has been asking quite a long time for we want AI ships in the world, and I think. The idea is so cool, I mean, we, we spend a lot of time talking that, talking around every cell that you see on the horizon would be another player ship, mm -hmm. but I think bringing in these skeleton ships, it's a great way of showing that we're listening to the community, that you know we're bringing in content that they want, mm -hmm. but also we want to surprise them. Mm -hmm. So in with the skeleton ships, we're bringing in cursed cannonballs. So these are a fantastical take on the cannonball. Mm -hmm. So these are these magical cannonballs that bestow status effects on ships and players. Ah, yeah. So some of the examples would be, you've got the rudder ball that locks someone's rudder. It's almost like curse the, the rudder, it prevents them from steering. Mm -hmm. So you could pick your moment, use that, and then they mm -hmm. crash into a rock or they, mm -hmm. they crash into an island. There's things like the jig ball, which forces the other crew to dance. So it hits them and they all break out in a dance, or the grog ball that makes, the, that makes them drunk and, uh -huh. and be sick over each other. So more opportunities so for humor. Seems to have a certain kind of humor. Yeah. <laughs> well, but you yes, can also use them against. That has the exactly. Humor, right? yeah. um, and the skeleton ships thematically, like in terms of the story, they bring them to the world. But then players will just be able to find them in the world from mm -hmm. that point onwards. So you can use them against skeletons and skeleton ships, but you can also use them against players. Mm -hmm. So it's a, lovely, it's a lovely tool that we're adding to the world. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we're also bringing in the Brigantine, mm -hmm. which is a new ship. Mm -hmm. So we've had a lot of feedback around players who have two other friends, mm -hmm. and they want an experience that's tailor-made for three players. Mm -hmm. And I guess typically in multiplayer games, you get two-player options, you get four-player options and more, but not really experiences based around three players. Mm -hmm. And we've let players play uh, in groups of three on the Galleon, but that ship was really designed for four players. So now it's about bringing an experience tailor-made for them. So that comes in with Cursed Sales as well. And then September, we've got Forsaken Shores. Yeah. So Forsaken Shores is our update around expanding the world of Sea of Thieves. Mm -hmm. So but again, something players have asked for, they've asked us to expand the world, but what we didn't want to do was just add a new region to the world that looked different, because we've got our three regions that look and feel different right now. We didn't want to just do that again and just add a fourth region. So for the Devil's Roar, it's all about the gameplay. So it's all about that area of the world, the islands themselves mm -hmm. are a threat to the players. So when you head into that, area into the devil's roar you're going to have to have you're going to have to think about it make a decision are you ready to do a devil's roar voyage because resources will be more sparse in that area mm -hmm. and the voyages will be more difficult but have greater rewards and you'll sell you'll be able to sell seamlessly into the devil's roar it's just an expansion to mm -hmm. the world and it's all about volcanic geological activity in that area mm. so you might set foot on the island you've got your treasure map you're about to go and find your treasure and then you feel tremors mm. and you're kind of like speaking to your crew do we think this is going to subside or is it going to is it going to like go any further mm. and then you see black smoke starts okay, booming out <laughs> <laughs> these add-ons or, or content updates yep. are free yep. absolutely yeah. so there's Hunger and Deep, obviously came out, that was free. Cursed Sales and Forsaken Shore are free. And now, and there's three more after that, okay. and then more next year. Okay. So the team that built the Hunger and Deep, they've now moved on to what's after Forsaken yeah. Shore. So now they've got even longer development time to build that. Because I wonder about your long time uh, business model. Mm. Um, I have no uh, actual numbers from the last uh, uh, month or so, maybe you can share a number with me, but I read that about 2 million uh, copies. F but 4 million ah, players. Thank you very much. I in the, in pay more attention to the So, background. 4 million players in the first two months. We've had an average hours played per player of 22 hours, so that's the average. So you can imagine on the top end, there's people mm -hmm. who played the game for more than a thousand hours. Still of those four millions, how many uh, millions uh, are playing it through Game Pass? What we've found is that a lot of players come in through Game Pass, and that's great for us, because so say, say if you bought the game, like see if these are the type of game that you want to play with your friends. It's an easy way to bring your friends in, mm. because you can say, well, try the Game Pass trial, come in for a very small subscription fee each month, and that means that we get more players, we get more feedback, we get more different player mm. types in that shared world, which means you know things play out differently because everyone's got different motivations. So by every kind of measure of success, Sea of Thieves has kind of done incredibly well mm -hmm. since launch. Mm -hmm. But all of these updates are free, 
Um, I mean, we don't really have any plans locked in place around how we want to monetize the game. I mean, our approach is very much around expanding the game, giving you more variety, giving you more reasons to come back and enjoy Sea of Thieves. I think in the future, if we ever do monetize, like the principles we put in place around ensuring that everyone can play together. There's no vertical progression in the game. We don't separate players. You don't have to keep up with your friends. The fact that all these content releases are free means that we don't segregate our players. And our whole kind of philosophy around doing new and interesting things, around innovating in gameplay, we'll want to innovate in that space as well. What we won't do is take something from another game and just put it in Sea of Thieves. We'd want to do something different with it. But in terms of plans, we've got no plans to do that at the moment. My last question would be about the PC versus Xbox yes. um, audience. Yeah. I think about 10 to 15 percent of those four millions might be playing on the PC. Or yeah, so we, we, are the, we are the biggest selling Windows 10 store game mm -hmm. so far. Uh, and the, the biggest, um, the, the best selling new IP mm. on the Xbox One. Still, why only 10%? Uh, oh. Well, why, why only 10% of the whole number? The PC market is much bigger and in the MMO space you got much bigger numbers. I think, for, I mean, for us, we all design Sea of Thieves to be, it, it's a service game. Mm. It's something that we build with our community. Mm. and. It's less about having this huge spike at launch where we bring loads of players in and then we lose those players. It's around starting with a strong base and then building content where players want that content and then bringing in more players. So it's less about the snapshot where we are now. You know, we are incredibly impressed with these numbers, we're really happy with the situation we have, hence why we are doubling down. The team is bigger now than it was before launch. We are building all this new content. Um, but this is about, about a long-term plan, okay. about growing this new IP, it's different, you can have experiences in a game like no other, it, it appeals to PC, it appeals to console, and we're just going to keep growing that community, that's our focus. Okay. Shelley, Mike, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.